Everybody, welcome back to the Flipping Junkie podcast. Today, I'm going to talking about waiting too long to hire. Now, this is something that uh, just really been uh, driven home to me on a daily basis lately because uh, finding having to do a lot in, in a business, especially in software business, a lot of different things that I've been doing. And I always tend to wait just too long to hire. It's been something in the past with a real estate investing business uh, and then with a software for a while. And I want to dig into that. Why is that, right? Like even today, I've had, you know, the first uh, half of this day, I had about 20 different things that I had to like switch over and deal with and make a decision about before I even got to the work that I had set out for myself to do today. And so that's a, a probably a common thing for a lot of you listening out there. I know a lot of people that I know that that ends up happening, right? We end up with all of this. And then at the end of the day, we just feel frustrated. We feel tired, drained. And, uh, and then, you know, what kind of parent are we at that point? You know, if the, you know, my son asked me for something two times or three times, it's over. I, I just can't, it's like, okay, I'll do it. That's fine. You know, and, and I'll give in when I shouldn't give in. And it's a problem, right? Because when we're busy doing all those different tasks and doing all that different work, uh, and we know we shouldn't be doing it a lot of time. We know that uh, our time is more valuable and we shouldn't be doing certain things, but we still do it. And I'm going to dig into that during this episode. It's a real quick episode. Uh, it's kind of like a leadership learning kind of episode that I'm, I'm going to be doing more of, but it's kind of like what I'm going through right now. And, you know, because I'm in it right now, and I think it's, it's going to be really helpful. And a lot of uh, our customers over at Forefront CRM, which is uh, the software that we've been building for several years now, um, you know, that's what they're interested in at that level of their, their real estate investing business where, you know, leadership becomes an important factor. Hiring becomes an important factor. So if you're not there yet, still listen in, you'll get some nuggets and hopefully save and avoid a lot of trouble that a lot of us have gone through because we didn't work on these things. And like I said, I'm still working on this. This is not something I figured out and I no longer have as a problem. It's a problem today. That's why I wanted to record an episode for you, but I'm going to talk about you know, basically determining what I'm doing every day that drains my energy, right? That's, that's a first step. Determining what's going to free up more of my time. So what of those things that I'm doing, uh, if I handed them off, would free up a lot more of my time. And then also I'm going to cover why I didn't do this sooner and may still not do it, right? And I'm not going to actually even say that may still not do it because I know I'm going to do it because I've, I've had enough um, you know, it limits growth. It, it causes frustration, burnout, all that kind of stuff. So I'm done with it. I'm committing now to make a lot more hires and, uh, and really make a big go of, of everything that I'm doing and, uh, and see the benefits from it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually truly excited about it. Uh, having a lot of this off my plate and I've already begun doing it. We've got a couple great people. We just brought on absolutely awesome people. I'm super excited about them. And uh, so, but let's dig into the process here. Like what did I start doing to figure out how to do this, how to go about this, right? And even if you have res reservations, so, you know, you probably might even be thinking, I'm not ready for that, right? I, I urge you just to set that aside. You can come back and pick it up later, but for now, set it aside um, and, and just listen into this because I hope you do, because I think especially at the end there, you'll, you'll see you know, the shifts that it took me too long to figure out. And I hope that you'll be able to make that after listening to this episode. So the first thing that you ought to do is an energy audit. Now, I did this uh, not too long ago, several months ago, I sat down, wrote a vertical line down a piece of paper. So I have a left side and a right side. The left side is going to be things that give me energy, the right side, things that drain my energy. Now, even if you've done this before, I urge you to do it again, because we find that we do a lot of different things over time. And, uh, it's important to do this. And this might be something that requires a week or two of, of work as you realize um, there's a lot of things that you didn't even think about that you were doing that you do uh, and you didn't put on the list and you need to put it on the list. So don't think that you'll sit down for 15 minutes, have it all hashed out. You might, but I found that there was a lot of things that I missed because uh, I don't do them often, but I do them every week. Just not, they don't take up a lot of time and hard to remember. Um, one tip for this is to get the tool called Toggle. It's a piece of software that you run on your desktop. It's very simple to use, and I'm pretty sure that it's still a free version. 
of it that works just fine. T-O-G-G-L. It's T-O-G-G-L called Toggle. And uh, what it is, is you can specify in there and start a timer when you work on something so that you know how much time you spent on it, right? And I love looking at the reports of these things because I'm amazed at how much time I spend on some of these, these things that I do. Now, the important stuff, the strategic stuff for your business, you could put into a project called working on my business. That way, when you get the report at the end of the week, you see how much time did I spend working on my business, right? Because if, if that is, is just like one hour or something a week or less than that, you've got a problem, right? Like there's definitely low hanging fruit where we can, you know, do stuff to grow our business and, and get our freedom back, right? Get that lifestyle that we want. And that's the bigger piece of this you know, this whole running ourselves ragged is, is just like got to stop because it's not in, it's not fun. You know, like you're not having fun anymore when you're having to do all this stuff. So take that energy audit, uh, make sure that you've got some time to set aside to actually focus on it and do it um, and, and fill that out. Sometimes it's hard to determine, you know, what, if something gives you energy or drains your energy, I know certain items, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if it does or not. And so I kind of had to wait until I did it again to, to, to consider whether it drained my energy or not, because I think sometimes we go into these things already drained, right? So it's kind of hard to say whether that was what drained you or you were already drained before you began trying to do it. So one exercise that you can try is to close your eyes. Imagine having to do that thing eight hours a day, five days a week, right? Would that, and did you feel exhausted just thinking about that? Then probably is something that you will, will drain your energy or does drain your energy, even if you only do it one hour a week. So consider having to do that all the time. Like that was your job. Does it, does it scare you? Okay. That drains your energy and put that down on that column. So it's kind of cool. Whenever I did it, um, I think at this point I was at about 50, 50, 50% of the stuff I was doing gave me energy 50% you know, just drain my energy. And it's kind of cool seeing the things that do because it's like, oh, I wasn't aware that that's really what I'm interested in. This, these tasks that I do and this other stuff, I just freaking hate. And it made me realize how much I do hate it. Um, so that's cool. All right, the next part of this, the next step, now that you've, you've seen where you spend your time and you saw, you've, you've determined, you know, what drains your energy and what gives you energy, um, I like to add another component and that's just writing down how much time you spend per week on those activities, right? Because it gives you an idea of if I removed these things from my plate, if I gave them to somebody else, how much time would that give me back, right? How much time would that free up for those strategic uh, planning, uh, looking at the big domino kind of stuff, you know, stuff's going to move the needle in your business uh, big time that you aren't able to because you're, you're busy doing all this other stuff. So writing out that amount of time, that's the other reason why I like doing that, that bit with the toggle, you know, being able to track that time. So I have an accurate representation of that. All right. So quickly now we're going to move into the part I was talking about earlier about why we still won't hire, right? Like what's, what's the thing that we're saying to ourselves that's keeping us from wanting to pull the trigger and make these hires beyond, you know, if you've never hired somebody, and you're kind of scared about it. Um, you know, if, if, if you've hired somebody before, you, you might also be thinking some of these things. So one thing that I would always kind of tell myself when I was considering hiring somebody for something was, I only spend two hours per week on that. Why would I hire somebody to do that, right? That's one that'll get you in trouble. Um, it's so easy to do. I really don't mind doing it. That's another one, right? I don't, I don't mind doing it. That, <laughs> that's another one, right? We are generating enough, we aren't generating enough revenue to cover the expense of hiring somebody. That's a big one, right? That's one I struggle with for sure sometimes. Wanting to, to make sure whatever business, you know, I've got growing that, that it pays for itself, right? That it doesn't require investment. Bootstrapping it and it's like we don't have enough revenue coming in to cover hiring all those people. So I'm not even going to consider it. That's a huge one. Um, Another one is it'll take more work to train that person than just than to just do it myself, right? So just you know, ha, ha, do any of those resonate with you? Do you guys run? Does that run through your mind when you consider hiring somebody? I'm sure it does. At least one or two of those. And it wasn't really until I read the book Who Not How. If you're watching this on YouTube, 
put that on there. Who not how Dan Sullivan and uh, Benjamin Hardy. Excellent, excellent book. And what that helped me to see was that it wasn't so much the doing of the things, right? Because if it only takes 30 minutes or an hour, two hours per week, maybe even three hours per week, um, that is, is not necessarily the, the problem. It's the switching between all those things and doing and being responsible for all those things. That carries a toll, like that carries a weight and a cost or an opportunity cost and, and what you're not doing because you're busy doing all those things. And for me, like this morning, switching between all these things just got frustrating, right? It's like, oh, here's another interruption. Here's another thing. Why am I still dealing with this? As the CEO of this company, why am I dealing with this? This is crazy. And, and I hope you start to see things that way too. It's crazy. It really is crazy. And it's the reason why growth sometimes doesn't happen the way we hope it will. Right? Because we're not willing to, to overcome those objections we come up with ourselves for not doing this. But I, I encourage you to read Who Not How. It's an excellent book. And it really you know, talks about the thing called uh, dis decision fatigue, right? where you're making so many decisions, you end up being you know, fatigued to, to where you're not making good decisions anymore. And you're not weighing all the things because you're just exhausted. right? It's just it's too much. You should be thinking higher level, bigger picture and, and having the energy to do that. And then at the end of the day, like not, you know, and not feeling frustrated, burned out and, and just like dreading the next day, you should be excited about it because you're, you're really, you know, playing the business owner and uh, working on the business and, and being ex excited about moving the ball, right. And not having to do all those things. And so the, and I also want to address if you if you think that you can't afford an employee uh, at this point, you know, think again, because a lot of this stuff that you're going to work out, I mean, since you're doing all these different things yourself, I'm, I'm sure you're not working 200 hours per week. I don't think that's possible <laughs> in so many different ways, not possible, but um, you know, I'm sure a lot of that is really kind of part-time work. And, and please don't consider hiring one person to do all those things. Like find a grouping of what you're doing as, a, you know, something that maybe an administrative assistant would do, or, you know, if you're doing social media, you probably don't want to have the administrative assistant doing the social media. You kind of need to figure out what are the, the different roles and not give some, somebody all these random roles. And, uh, but there's plenty of people out there looking for part-time work, especially remote. Most of us, you know, working remote and uh, a lot of the people everywhere have been working remote for a while now. So there's, I, I just posted a job, a part-time job uh, just, just last week. And in 24 hours, I think it was 500 applications for part-time work, like five to 10 hours per week. So, so don't wait any longer. You can do that. I'm sure you can. And, and the cost, you can have them as a contractor, right? The remote, you're not setting their schedule, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can have them as a contractor. Definitely check into that with uh, HR, whatever, <laughs> whatever the entity is that you need to check in for that stuff. But, um, but, but there's no reason why you shouldn't be, be finding somebody to do that because there's plenty of people willing to do that with experience and especially with all the technology and stuff, we can do a lot of this remote. So don't wait any longer, take that energy audit, start making some hires. And uh, the next step of this is really the hiring process, right? That's where I've had some failure in the past. Um, definitely not a fun thing to go through. Uh, I will have another episode. I'm not sure when I'll do that episode, probably in two to three weeks. But for now, just know that the book, Who, so I just talked earlier about Who, not How, but there's another book called Who, and that's... Um, by Jeff Smart and Randy Street. And that really talks about like the hiring process and, and how to, to structure hiring somebody so that they're set up for success. That's the main thing. When you hire somebody, you need to know before you attempt to hire somebody what the outcome is for them coming on to work, right? And so that's what that book goes through. So I'm, I'm in the middle of reading that, super excited about it. And uh, I think that's enough. So hopefully, you know, if Next time you're feeling like you're switching between a million things, have a ton of responsibility uh, to make decisions about all these things that a CEO probably shouldn't have to be making the decision about anymore, then uh, 
it's time to, to do this, take the energy out it, look at who to hire and make those hires. So thank you so much for listening to the flipping junkie podcast. It means a lot to me. If you'd leave a, a rating and review on our podcast, flipping junkie podcast over at iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast, that, that means a lot to me. I, I really appreciate reading those uh, from the people that have left them. I think there's nearly 500 of them, maybe over 500 at this point. But uh, I'd love to have you mention that because I'm speaking into a microphone, looking at a computer. Um, it's cool to see, you know, who I'm reaching with a lot of this. And if it resonates with you, awesome. The other thing is um, we've been putting on a, a workshop for turning more leads into deals. And so if your business, if you feel like you're just every couple months trying a new strategy to generate more leads so that you can try to do the number of goals that you've or number of deals that you've set a goal for and really kind of tired of that and want to figure out how to just turn more of those leads into deals. That's what that workshop's all about. So you can check that out at uh, flippingjunkie.com slash workshop. Uh, hope to see you there, flippingjunkie.com slash workshop. Everybody have a great week. We'll see you next time.